Don't you love it when Nintendo... Nintendo's no stranger to lawsuits. In fact, they're almost infamous for them. Now, Nintendo gained their infamy by going after fans and content creators. You know, times when they went, fuck that guy specifically. And I'll cover that in a later video, but today I want to talk about times that Nintendo sued or was sued by other corporations and Yuri Geller. This is Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller was a TV personality who claimed to be a psychic and telekinetic and proved his claims by doing basic magic tricks on live TV. Basically, he's a con man. Oh shit, this guy really is brave. He just called out Yuri Geller. In the year 2000, oh shit, we missed Y2K. Yuri became convinced that the Pokemon Kadabra was an anti-Semitic caricature of himself. So Yuri took this to heart and in November of 2000 sued Nintendo for 60 million pounds. Over Kadabra? In an interview, Pokemon anime director and storyboard artist Masamitsu Hikata stated that Kadabra would no longer be used on Pokemon trading cards until the case reached an agreement. The case never reached an agreement and was dismissed in 2003. SHIT! However, Yuri did lift the ban on the printing of Kadabra cards in 2020, stating how sorry he was and that he didn't understand what the card meant to the children of the world. They still haven't printed one since 2003. SON OF A BITCH! Speaking of bitches, Blockbuster. Oh shit, this guy really is brave. He called out Blockbuster. The year is now 1989 and Blockbuster is fucking poppin'. In 1989, it was estimated that a new Blockbuster was opening every 24 hours. In the same year, their revenue was estimated to be over 600 million dollars. 50 million of which was from NES cartridges. Three things were exploding in 1989 home computers, the NES, and the Berlin Wall, which came down that November. Before I really get going, just so you know, this one's a lot more legal stuff than just, this Pokemon smells like me. During the 1980s, Blockbuster picked up on the tech boom and started renting out two new things computer software and NES games. And because of this, a bunch of people threw a fit. Nintendo, Microsoft, Word Perfect Corporation, Software Publishers Association, Catholic Church Congregation. All of these guys wanted to limit, and in Nintendo's case probably ban, the rental of their products. So the Video Software Dealers Association offered a compromise. They would support new rental limits on software, as long as they could keep renting out Nintendo games. Now Nintendo didn't love this deal, so that's exactly the one that went through. Now Nintendo had no way to stop Blockbuster from renting out the cartridges. So they went after the books. Apparently, Blockbuster had adopted the practice of reprinting game manuals when the originals got lost. And, uh... <sighs> that smells like the intellectual property of Nintendo you just reproduced and distributed. Blockbuster claimed in court that Nintendo was only going after them because they were mad that Blockbuster could still rent out their game cartridges. And they were absolutely right. But that didn't stop Blockbuster from having to shut down the reprinting of manuals and having to settle outside of court for an undisclosed and probably shit ton of money. But after this, Nintendo came out with some Blockbuster exclusive versions of their games. So that should tell you something. Sleep with the enemy, kids. I want to touch on one last case, and that is Universal versus Nintendo. Every kid who's ever played a Nintendo game has had the realization that, wait a minute, Donkey Kong? That sounds like King Kong. Now imagine that kid is Universal Studios president Sid Sheinberg. And Sid realizes that he owns King Kong, and Nintendo is hypothetically making a lot of his money. So on June 29th, 1982, Universal filed suit on Nintendo and announced that they had licensed the rights to King Kong to Coleco, which for comparison, is like if you were playing with a toy, and then someone comes up to you and says that it's his toy, and then he gives the toy to your little brother with no arms, and then he shat in your mouth. Side note, did you know that Coleco came out with something called the Coleco Gemini, which is a straight up clone of the Atari 2600? It is the wild fucking west out here. Most of Nintendo's licensees want to just pay the license for Conky Kong and be done with it. But Milton Bradley and also Purina decide that's not going to happen. So now the case is officially going to court and Nintendo hired John Kirby to represent them. Yes, you know that Kirby? He's named after this guy for this case. This case goes through the whole ringer, ending up in court three separate times. But in the end, John Kirby is able to prove that King Kong is part of the public domain and not owned by Universal at all. So even if Nintendo did take from King Kong, they weren't infringing on anything. Thank you for watching.